thank you, Bujut. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mary, ITK, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Um, vision and Voices of Inuit Youth, uh, ITK at 40. Where have we come from? Where are we going? For me personally, um, I come from Ikahuk in Nunakput, which is known in English as the Inuvialuit Settlement Region or Sax Harbor. And um, for me to understand where I come from, to me that means I have to talk to my elders. Um, one role model in particular who was very important in um, shaping my values and worldview was my nanak, Sarah Kaptana, who I spent a lot of time with um, growing up. Although I am born in Ottawa, um, my mother, Rosemary Kaptana, thought it very important for me to understand my Inuvialuit values um, to help guide what, what it is I would be doing with my energy in terms of uh, formal education, but as we've heard, also Inuit cultural education. And uh, Nanak, Sarah, she was a large source of that for me, a large source of those values and um, that worldview um, growing up. And then on the formal education side, um, I did my, my high school and started my university career in uh, Peterborough, Ontario. Um, and Nanak always would say, um, get your education, my boy. That way you can buy your own quad and go out hunting. <laughs> and I think what she really meant by that was, once you have that piece of paper um, that the society that we live in now says, you know, you need to have, it'll open up so many more doors. Um, but she also didn't want me to forget um, how important my Inuvialuit education is. And um, although I've grown up here in Ottawa and I'm lacking that, I have a strong family support system back home in uh, Ikahuk who have that education and who are willing to teach me. So through my formalized education at Trent University, I became uh, involved with the Inuit Circumpolar Council. And uh, that connected me back to Ikahuk, my home community, and two other uh, Inuvialuit uh, communities in Nunakput, working on a traditional knowledge research project as part of the uh, International Polar Year. And um, during that time, um, I realized that it was important for um, research to be done by Inuvialu or by Inuit for Inuit. Um, although I do not speak the language, as you obviously can tell, or else I would be speaking to you in Inuktitut, um, there are people who can help me learn to educate myself in that. And um, during that research, it was an advantage, I think, um, to have an Inuvialuit interviewing Inuvialuit and continuing um, that relationship of elder and youth. Um, and that was afforded to me through a formalized education um, uh, institution, Trent University. And I learned, um, I learned a lot about myself and about my family. I'll give you an example. I was in Ulukakduk, which is formerly known as Holman Island, and I was looking at a map on my Uncle Robert's uh, kitchen wall, and it was pointing to the Inuvialuit settlement region communities, and it said Nunakput, and I said, what's Nunakput? And he said, oh, that's what we call our homeland. It's not the Inuvialuit settlement region. So to echo Tony Anderson's words this morning, um, it's, to me, it's not Saks Harbor, it's Ikahuk. It's the place where we go across to Ulukakduk. And um, it's not the Inuvialuit settlement region, it's Nunakput. So there was more education for me uh, about my Inuit history that I didn't even know. And um, that really opened my eyes <coughs> 
just in terms of how much there is to learn, how much work there is still to be done. Um, and we think about the past 40 years where ITK has come from, all the former leaders, all the hard work they've done. And I think it's important for us as youth to understand the responsibility we have as, as young Inuit um, to continue that work because it's very important. And a lot of former leaders have made very great strives and advances, but we must not also forget they've made sacrifices as well. So it's important for us to carry on this work so that those sacrifices are not in vain. And um, and I think that um, education so far has been a large part of what the panel has been communicating. And we heard from the panel this morning that we need to have both a foot in each world, which is a challenge. So I think um, over the next 40 years, my vision in terms of ITK and the regional uh, governing bodies, what, what is there in place for Inuit who leave the north to attend formal education? Because there are no universities in the north, there, there are colleges, but there is no formalized university in the north, so what kind of strategy is there in place to ensure that Inuit have access to formalized education, but also cultural education? There are on the land camps um, where elders teach our youth about hunting, um, about how to read the weather, and about how to test the ice, and are there universities and high schools that are connected to those camps in the regions? I don't have the answer to that, but if there aren't, how can we start a process where there is help for youth to learn both types of education, both the formalized education and the Inuit cultural education? So, in the next 40 years, that's something I would like to become involved with, both as a spokesperson for Inuit youth in communicating the importance of that formalized education, how it opens up doors to opportunities. Um, and in the summer of 2008, um, I was approached by the University of Manitoba to participate in a Circumpolar Inuit Schools on Board field program, which at the time I thought, no way, not going to do it, it's too much. Um, I was scared, like I am now, <laughs> and um, I did it anyways. And it was not only to my benefit, but it was to the benefit of my community the other seven Inuit youth from across the Circumpolar North who were also participants in that Schools on Board program. And we brought forward messages from our communities to the scientists on board the Research Icebreaker about the changes we are seeing, the changes our hunters and our people who are out on the land are seeing, and what it is we would like from the scientists in terms of studies that Inuit can use information from in an understandable manner, not in a scientific report that is difficult to understand if Inuktitut is your first language. Um, so, um, that's really where my source of strength comes, is from my Nanak and from uh, from my mother as well, from the work she's done. Those are, have been two of my biggest role models in my life. And um, as such, I feel responsible to carry on the work that, that they have done. And, um, and I'd like to say, Kwana, 
Thank you for having me here. And I hope you guys have lots of good questions for us.